Hello everyone, and this evening, good morning there, well, I'm gonna do a, a video on just making a circle on the screen move. Alright, so going to my um, Notepad++, start off with the um, just making the circle. All right, I'll just make it a bit larger so you can see it. Install configurator. Okay, so just in a uh, your web browser, so you've got the, the head section, you've got the style, basically that's the only thing. No JavaScript here so far, just um, CSS. So I defined a style for a circle, um, which is, okay, to do a circle in CSS, you'll need to put the, basically it's a square, so I've got the width and the height, 200 pixels, with a border radius of 50%. Okay, so that creates the circle. Okay, um, here I've got a, um, a background uh, gradient, so there's a radial gradient. Okay, so I'll just take that off at first, so you can see the difference. Um, and then we've got, let's take this off as well. No, that's fine. Um, let's, let's see. Alright, so at the moment, you can't see anything, it's just, you can put text in here. Actually, I had... A span here which I don't think I will use, so take that off. Okay, so that was nothing, but with the background color, you can actually see the circle. Uh, let's see if we can put like a. Um, you couldn't see anything there, right? Can't see anything, no circle. Can we make an outline of the circle? Can we make an outline of the circle instead of so if I take off this um, here you'll see the actual circle Ta -da. and but can we get an outline of the circle if you know the way put that in the comments okay so so we've got a circle the color um, Margin, margins just so it doesn't you know interfere with other elements in the page, and the position relative. So this is important. So this one basically takes the positioning from anything outside of it, but basically it's saying no no real position if there's nothing outside of it, and then the ones inside of it that like the text, we're going to have positioning absolute. So that'll um, Take it from. Uh, You'll be able to assign the you know, the top and the bottom and left and right to this one, but it's related to. It's going to take take its. It's hard to explain. I'll just go back to the um, define absolute positioning in CSS. Let's just check that. So absolute positioning. Elements that are positioned rel relatively positioned remain in the normal flow of the document. In contrast, an element that is absolutely positioned is taken out of the flow, thus other elements are positioned as if it does not did not exist. Fair enough. Yeah, so you could have text for in the page. And this thing that's position absolute can um, can go on top of the text basically. It's just based on the outside thing. All right, um, top fifty percent. So again, um, we're looking at the positioning of the outer circle. 
so the it's the position of this text is moving down 50% of the size of the circle so basically it's aligning it vertically positioned so if we don't have that there you see what I mean the moment you can see it there we go it's way up there now but if we put the top 50% in very important line push that goes back in there okay so in, um, these are just two classes one's for the actual circle that's and then the second one is for the text inside the circle um, also you uh, width inheriting the width of the circle um, height put as um, auto um, if you take that off doesn't really do anything because the vertically alignment of the top 50% is helping us there um, and it's also like if we didn't have any text in there at all let's check that out like the dot there or something yeah dots right in the center there so the height order doesn't seem to do much at this point anyway and um, Okay, the main thing is the top 50% for the vertical alignment. Um, align the center, text align center. That's that's not doing too much. Um, well, it is. It's um, but not too much as you'll see. Without that, it's a little bit more to the left. Depending on how much text you got there. If you have a lot of text, it'll basically align the center anyway. With it, with text aligned center, pushes it a little bit more in the center there. Okay, um, transform, translate y minus 50%. That's not really required in this instance. Very marginal difference here when that's in there. See? Dropped it down a little bit. So that's just there to make sure um, it's like centered in the page as well right so this is just the classes of the two divs I'm going to put in down the bottom here so I've got a div class circle div class inside circle which as you can see this is inside so this class circle is the outside of it. If I put this div here for the circle and is that going to make any difference? Yes. <laughs> okay. So all those things that are below circle are now pushed um, basically at the start of the positioning of where the circle top left of the circle where that would go um, as you can see positioning absolute um, doesn't interfere with the other elements in the page as you can see there so these buttons were down the bottom here and if you take off the um, div For the outer, the outer div here, the circle, yeah, things will just flow up there. Alright. So 
we've got the circle there, the text in there. Alright, so that's basically how you align a circle with text inside it. Make a circle with text inside it. Okay? And I put some buttons here to start and stop the animation, which I haven't actually done yet. But I have got some code from pre previously used in the previous um, ex uh, example where we stopped and started an animation. So I've got um, two functions in JavaScript run me and stop me. And a button uh, run me and stop me. Alright, so these buttons down the bottom I've called something else of this one we're currently doing. Um, but I can just update that. So go back to this one, get the JavaScript out. It's going to be basically the same. Reuse that code. So at the top of the page here, above the style tag, put in script tag. Two different functions. Um, so we're using the DOM model for this JavaScript here. Document dot get, get element by ID. Haven't. Uh, I'll have to rename that and that. Um, animation play state running and paused. Okay, so we haven't actually defined that in here yet. So the circle will have animation. Define the animation first, and then then also we'll have the animation play state. And that that's by default would be running, but um, put it as paused. Animation. So here we call it M span the animation. Um, play state running. No, it won't be. So this this will actually be referring to the um, the ID of the uh, circle. And I'll call this one ID. Circle one uh, dodgy calling it same as that one, the same as a class. So I just call it um, circle one, circle one. Okay, and this so this is a unique name for the circle, and so I call it circle one, circle one. Animation state is running, and here circle one. Animation state play state animation play state is paused. So animation play state paused. Animation. All right. So I'll define the animation now. Um, all right. So let's do this one here. We use that. So animation, I call it a rad circle, and this is going. So it'll go for five seconds, linear movement, and iteration five. By the way, this is my attached microphone. It's actually a snowball shoved into my shirt. <laughs> I've just, um, yeah, because I couldn't find the plug in for my usual head mic. Wasn't done. Um, I was missing a c cable somewhere, so yeah, I'm using this one for the moment. And so we've got red circle, five seconds, five iterations. All right, and then so we've caught a red circle. So down here, we'll make keyframes for the animation. Uh, keyframes, call it red circle. Fairly straightforward. Put in the curly brackets there, and uh, put in the percentages like z at zero percent, twenty-five percent, fifty percent, seventy-five percent, and hundred percent keyframes. Um, actually done that before, so save a bit of typing. 
All right, so we go at zero percent. We we use this transform with the word transform here, um, which relates to the animation up here. So we're transforming this shape, this circle, and we're going through the you know, 360 degrees. You could change these degrees to you know, you make it a slower spin at the start, faster spin at the end if you want to make it, make it like a 10 degrees here, etc. But we'll keep it a normal linear. You didn't even need to put in these 25, 50, 75. You could just put 0%, 0, 100%, 360. That's, that's all you need. I just did this to make it a bit... bit um, uh, easier to modify if you want to change the speed and also um, uh, I do like riding a skateboard so we've got all these common angles here <laughs> 90 degrees, 180 degrees spin etc okay um, alright so I'll just save that and at the moment nothing's gonna work so we've got a so stop animation, start animation, stop animation, start animation, one and two, okay. So keyframes, red circle, that's all good. Now these buttons here, they're not linked to the scripts. So run me and stop me. Okay, so I don't need these, this is just for another one I was going to do. So button, um, on click. Button on click, sign to. I'll just um, copy that. Put in the second one. So this will be run me. And this one will be stop me. Somebody stop me. All right. Start animation, stop animation. Oh, <laughs> what have I done? Uh, I haven't named him very well, have I? Um, okay, this one should say start animation. This one should say stop animation. Okay, do that again. Alrighty, so start animation. Okay, and the circle is spinning. Stop, start, stop. There you go. So that's how you do a circle with uh, that can spin using CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so basically the, C the circle and the coloring all done in CSS. The, um, the buttons here are linked to using JavaScript. Most of it is done in CSS. Okay, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like more. Bye. Bye for now.